Hi there, I'm Black Bright. Welcome to my channel. And if it's the first time you're passing through, good morning, good afternoon, good night. You're welcome to share, like, subscribe. Yeah, pass on the button and that will make me really happy. I really appreciate the subscribers I do have. I love their support. I love their feedback. I like their comments and requests for advice and, you know, show of appreciation. I've got so many people who just appreciate what I do and that makes it all worthwhile. So thank you. Um, today I wanted to talk about amnesty and I was reading The Spectator and what it was saying today was that there are two types of citizenships. Now, they say um, there is an unspoken truth about British life. We have two classes of citizen. The first are those born or formerly settled here who have all the rights and protections of the law. And then there are perhaps a million others who may have lived here with their families for years but without the proper documents. Now that's not the definition of a citizen. This, the latter is not a citizen. So I don't know quite how they come to that conclusion. Okay, a citizen is defined as legally recognised subject of or national of a state or commonwealth, either native or naturalised. In other words, a citizen is the status of a person recognised under the custom or law as being a legal member of a sovereign state or belonging to a nation. The idea of citizenship has been defined as capacity of individuals to defend their rights in front of the government authority. So that's what a citizen is. So I don't understand how the spectator will assume that people who are undocumented are citizens. Now, that's what made me think about squatters. It might not be a, a friendly or politically correct term. It might, not, it might even come over as derogatory. But just bear with me a little bit. Because there are sim there's so many similarities to why... People who have overstayed or undocumented should be given amnesty because they should be entitled to squatters' rights, which is very, very similar. Now, this is just my mind doing over time. Sometimes I go through these phases where, you know, I, I put on a different hat and I start analysing different types of things. And, and this video is about one of them. So I've had to write down a bit and then what I'll do is I'd ad lib as and when. So, um, the idea a citizen has been defined in capacity of individuals to defend their rights in front of the government or authority. Now, what I was thinking is that the squatters, they're still entitled to Article 8. Everybody, every human being is entitled to human rights under Article 8. So, which is where peaceful enjoyment of your property and respect of family life would come into play. So notwithstanding these people are undocumented, they would still be entitled to that. And when you're thinking about squatters, they have similar rights. You can't go in there banging down their doors and rooting them out unless, you know, you're a police or a bailiff. Okay, so... Let me just continue. Just bear with me, OK, because I thought it was quite an interesting way to look at it. So I'm par paralleling illegal immigrants with the squatter scenario. OK, in order to be to successfully acquire a property as a squatter, you need to have lived in there between 10 and 12 years. OK, that's key. Before 2012, squatting in England and Wales was generally a civil matter, not a criminal matter, but this has now been changed. In September 2012, Section 144 of the LASPO made it a criminal offence to trespass in residential properties with the intention of living there. Trespassing, of course, means um, being on someone else's property without their permission, which is what undocumented individuals are doing okay now 
The right of occupation and repossession now lies with the property owner, which, paralleled, are the immigration officers, who, who has the right to evict squatters far more quickly than was possible before, and so long as they follow the legal process to do it with the full backing of the law. So the equivalent of this is the police arresting, liaising with the Home Office and deporting. The problem with this though is that it's not always lawful. So, and now we know why they try to get rid of um, travellers, you know, um, in quotes, gypsies off of certain sites, because if they acquire a site and they're on there too long, they can actually end up owning it. Um, in the UK, squatting in a residential property is illegal, the equivalent here is someone who is coming into the country and has overstayed on UK soil. So that's the parallel I made there. The term squatters' rights famously surfaced in the 1970s when squatters in residential properties was popular way to secure accommodation. Squatters would gain entry and paste a poster on the door announcing the occupation of the property and claim their right not to be disturbed, reminding the property owner and even the police that it would be an offence to force entry to try to evict them. Now, the only remaining rights squatters in residential property on UK soil retain are the right to connect utilities, which must be done in their name, otherwise it would be considered theft. The right to oppose forcible entry from anyone other than the police or court-appointed bailiffs. The right to be threatened, the right not to be threatened with violence. The right to apply for legal ownership of the property through a process known as adverse possession. So the equivalent for our um, squatters, in quotes, or illegal undocumented um, immigrants would be applying for an ILR visa settlement or citizenship. That would be the equivalent, which is, coincidentally, you can do it after 10 years. And after 10 years, if you've been on a property, if you've been squatting in a property for over 10 years, you have squatters rights and you can actually inherit that property. So it's a similar scenario. If squatters can show evidence of continual occupation and improvements to the property over a period of 10 years, 12 if the property is registered with the HM Land Registry, then this right can be exercised. In some cases, such as earlier this year, adverse possession claims have proved successful. Okay, so to gain this, a residential property owner struggling to get squatters out must follow the legal process by applying for an interim possession order, order which is equivalent to a deportation order or a notice of deportation in order to retrieve their property and in the case of the undocumented immigrants in order to get them off our land so to speak. The only exception to this is if the homeowner can prove they are displaced residential occupiers, are homeless if they cannot get back into their home, which the hope that doesn't apply to the Home Office because they are not living on the UK soil where these undocumented immigrants live. Okay, or where potential tenants have the paperwork which shows they should be in occupation and are also being made homeless by the presence of squatters. So that would that doesn't apply because the immigration wouldn't be inconvenienced in that way by undocumented immigrants. With squatting in residential property now a criminal offence, squatters living in a property for less than 10 to 12 years may also be convicted for their illegal occupation, possibly gaining a criminal conviction with prison sentences of up to six months fines of up to 5,000 for even both penalties. So therefore, living in the UK for over 10 to 12 years, you could become a citizen by default. And maybe that is what the spectator is alluding to. Hence the entitled to amnesty, squatters rights. 
Undocumented personnel are in fact squatters and are therefore entitled to squatters rights. This is just my way of thinking, okay? Uh, there was changes in the law, the squatters law. The problem with squatters law and where it would not apply to the undocumented person is that the law does not cover situations where the property is non-residential. So the UK is not a residential property. Uh, property are or where tenants, including subtenants of the property, if you previously had a right, um, this would be equivalent to if you previously had um, a right to be in the country, but your visa expired. That would be the equivalent. People have or had had an agreement with someone with a right to the property. The equivalent would be that you originally acquired a visa into the UK. And people in the property are not intending to live there, merely visiting. So you came on a visitor's visa. OK. So if you didn't know that you were trespassing, i.e. you didn't know your visa had expired, you are not covered by the new law. But it also says that if you ought to know, you would be committing an offence. Now, that is like, you know, when they, you know, I did a video the other day and a couple of people forgot their, uh, the date that they were supposed to renew their visa. And the Home Office are saying, well, you should you should have known when your visa expired. You see the parallel, it's very, very similar. Non-residential squatting is, le is still legal. Section six of the Criminal Law Act 1977 makes it an offence to force entry into a building which is occupied and this includes squatters. This will no longer help against the police if they are enforcing the new law against squatters in residential properties, but in otherwise, but it is otherwise still valid. This is explained in the legal warnings which squat squatters have either on display or ready to show people. So um, I don't know what you think about that. Yeah, I don't know what you think about that. I think the, the rest of it is just me going, oh yeah, let me just tell you a bit about my friend Boris. Boris still seems keen on amnesty since embarked on his political career. And that's why I'm saying, you know, if squatters have a right to a property after 10 to 12 years, so should undocumented immigrants. And this is why I think Boris might be successful if they're using, and I believe that the law is very similar. The law for squatters and the law for undocumented citizens is just worded a little bit different, but I believe it's very, very similar. So Boris still seems keen on an amnesty since he embarked on his political career. The main objection is the people who broke the law in coming in here ought not to be rewarded, but they are just as entitled to acquire legitimacy due to the long term stay in the country as a squatter has. An amnesty would not increase the actual population of Britain as opposed to the official population because these people are living here anyway. What it would do is bring them out of the black economy, make it more likely that they will pay tax and give them a greater incentive to make a contribution to civic life. I got that from somewhere and I'll put the link down below when I publish this. Um, there is now ample evidence to show that amnesties strengthen society. Ronald Reagan offered an amnesty to illegal um, immigrants in 1986 and studies show that they, that they were then far better able to integrate into society. Their language skills increased and their wages rose by 25% as they were able to escape the unregulated exploitation ridden shadow economy. A 2005 amnesty in Spain raised an extra 4,000 of tax revenue for every naturalised citizen. An amnesty would not mean that we stop policing the borders. The problem is that for years UK authorities have been pursuing those who are living and working peacefully rather than focusing on criminals and smuggling gangs. 
So, I don't know what you think about that idea. It's just a thought, and your comments would be appreciated. Bye-bye.